Joe Biden says all black people are the same. Oprah lectures everyone on white privilege. Mainstream media ignores the murder of a child. And Joe Biden finally picks his vice president candidate. All that and more on this episode of The Johnny Ray Show. Dementia Joe is at it again. It's almost like every week is a new Joe Biden gaffe. I'm going to have to change the name from the Johnny Ray Show to the Joe Biden gaffe show. <laughs> Nobody should be in jail for a nonviolent crime. Um, Joe, what about drug dealers dealing heroin or stealing a television set? My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Um, excuse me, Joe, you're running for president. What's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? And what a neat town. Psst. Joe, you're, you're in New Hampshire, and Vermont is a state. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even. <laughs> Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over facts. Um. What? Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go. You know the. You know the thing. Say it, Joe. Just say it. Just. Just want say it. God. 150 million people have been killed since 2007 when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers from liability. Um, that's like half of the U.S. population, Joe. They would put 720 million, back, million women back in the workforce. Dang, that's a lot of women. You had people like Margaret Thatcher, oh, excuse me, you had people like the, the former chairman and leader of the party in, the, in Germany. legs that turn that 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 turn uh, um, blonde in the sun and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair c come back up again they look at it so I learned about roaches I learned about kids jumping on my lap even I'm not touching that one but we'll get into his latest ridiculously racist statement in just a moment. But first, today podcasts are all the rage. Everyone wants a voice and now Anchor has given you that voice. Anchor is the easiest way to podcast, whether it's political or fun, about parenting or just your day-to-day -day routine. Anchor is the free, easy way to get heard. Anchor allows you to create, edit, and publish your podcast right from your smartphone or your computer. Anchor will distribute the podcast for you so you don't have to. It's everything you need to create a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started. You know, Joe Biden has had some amazing gaffes in his presidential run since he officially entered the presidential race back on April 25th of last year. But the last few weeks, it's been getting slightly out of control. The latest one was this Thursday where he did a pre-taped interview with the National Association of Black Journalists and National Association of Hispanic Journalists. He said that unlike black people who are all the same, Hispanics are diverse. I kid you not, I could not make this stuff up. Take a listen. If you don't believe me, just listen. What you all know, but most people don't know, Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. You go to Florida, you find a very different attitude about immigration in certain places than you do in your, when you're in Arizona. Could you imagine if Donald Trump or any Republican had said this? It would be the number one trending. It would be world news. It would be nonstop. 
Trump racist comments on every headline. But when Dementia Joe says it, it's crickets. This isn't the first and won't be the last, I'm sure. We have 81 or 80 days until the election, and he's on pace for at least 80 more gaffes, I kid you not. CNN doubled down for Biden, defending his remarks by condemning the reactions to Biden's racist remarks. They said, what Biden said was outrageous, but so was the reaction. It's, it goes on to say, the context here is key. Perry says, people outraged at Biden's comments ignore the context and an unwritten rule about racial remarks. A white person can't instruct black people on their racial identity. No pontificating about you can't be black if you like opera or anything like that. They can, however, question the political identity and choices of a black person who votes for a president that spreads a birther conspiracy theory about the nation's first black president and said that they were very fine people on both sides of a white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, Perry says. Biden's remarks were clumsy and off-putting, but he had the right to ask that question. His point is, if you're voting for Trump in 2020, all, you, all you've seen and heard, and you're a black person that certainly calls into question your black political identity, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It goes on to say, Trump has repeatedly attacked Obama, called Mexican immigrants rapists, referred to African nations as blank holes, and dispatched a series of racist tweets telling four non-white Democratic Congresswomen that they should go back, quote-unquote, to the, quote-unquote, crime-infested places where they came from. I find it hilarious that CNN deflects so well. They cannot simply admit that Dementia Joe has radically racist comments, they must continue to push the fallacies about Trump being a racist. If Trump is a racist, he is the worst racist. Absolutely worst racist in the history of racism. He has done more, not just as the president, but even before he was elected president, than most black people do for their own race now. Just as the president, he's given more black and minority student scholarships to go to college. He's given billions to hot zones in poverty-stricken areas. He's given more than any president in history. He had the lowest black and minority unemployment rate, highest black and, and minority job inclusion rate than any president in history. In history. But before he was elected, he gave Jennifer Hudson and her family a free stay at Trump Towers in Chicago. He paid the bill for them to stay there after her mother and brother were murdered and her nephew was abducted back in 2008. He had them stay there completely free. They had to pay nothing. And when asked about it, he said... He simply did it because he wanted them to be safe and out of harm's way. I mean, if he's a racist, he is horrible at racism. He is the worst. It's horrible. But in true Trump fashion, President Trump was not going to miss an opportunity to punch back at Biden and the left. He was asked about Biden's comments about the black community not being diverse, here's what he had to say. Take away your guns, destroy your Second Amendment, no religion, no anything, hurt the Bible, hurt God. He's against God, he's against guns, he's against energy, our kind of energy. And speaking of racism, Oprah Winfrey took to her platform to teach us all about our white privilege and to push the white guilt angle on all the white people. The black woman, who's worth two and a half billion, that's billion with a B, folks, 
and she is going to tell white people about white privilege. Take a listen to this. And as white people, we, we even the poorest of the poor, I feel still has a leg up. Um, and it's yeah, it's and really the leg up is what I was saying. You still have your whiteness. That's what the that's what the term white privilege is. It means that whiteness still gives you an advantage no matter what. White people. <laughs> oh, I I've never in my 32 years of well 31 almost 32 years of life heard such tomfoolery. I uh, I I can't I can't even a woman who's black worth more than 95% of of everyone in America probably 95% of white people in America telling us lecturing us about us having white privilege Barack Obama was president for a whole eight damn years Oprah is worth two and a half billion dollars Michael Jordan is a billionaire Kanye West billionaire David Stewart a billionaire Jay-Z a dad gone billionaire take away the billionaires you still got 50 cent p diddy tiger woods magic johnson tyler perry bill cosby Shaq, dr dre beyonce they're all millionaires and when i say millionaires i mean each of them have over 300 million dollars millionaires not like oh they cracked the one million dollar millionaires i mean each of those are worth more than 90% of the normal population of America. Now, yes, there are plenty of white billionaires and millionaires. But that's also attributed to the white people make up far more of the population. And if you really want to go into that, we could discuss Planned Parenthood and their attempt, and so far successful, genocide of the black population left wouldn't have none of that discussion though would they they wouldn't want to talk about that they wouldn't want to talk about Planned Parenthood and the fact that they their primary objective is to to genocide the the entire population of the black community I mean the basic fundamental of white versus black and minority wealth is attributed majorly to the fact that most black millionaire wealth is generational. This is the first generation wealth for most of them. Whereas white wealth is usually inherited or passed down. That's where the disconnect is. White people tend to pass down wealth whereas minority races don't. And they don't due to either having, not having the future generations, i.e. Planned Parenthood, successfully completing their goal, or the frivolous spending. Again, you could attribute a vast majority to the Planned Parenthood. I mean, their, their founder, Margaret Sanger, even specifically states that their primary task is to destroy the black race. I mean, and, and the sad thing is, is that black people, they support that. They blindly support it, knowing that that's what their primary objective is. And then they want to know why they don't have generations of wealthy, successful black people. Or even minority people, for that matter, because you could attribute that same logic to minorities. It's befuddling at how you could talk about the the wealth gap between whites and blacks, but yet you won't attribute the attributing factors. And the attributing factors are that most white wealth is inherited because they have future generations. Most black wealth 
is not inherited. You also have to go based on the per capita. You can't you can't say that well there's far more white billionaires and millionaires because black people only make up a, a fraction of the population and and most most wealth is attributed by males unfortunately that's just how it tends to break down and that's an even smaller proportion because there's only about 6% of the United States population is black males so you, it's even smaller of a percentage of the population but if you go based on the per capita per thousand it's really not that much different between the number of white millionaires and the number of black millionaires now the billionaires are a little different because again the the black people don't have the generational wealth that the white people have accrued over time based on you know previous enactment of laws if you will but that doesn't stop the fact that if they if 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 planned parenthood wasn't succeeding at their primary objective which is to destroy the black race they would have generations and that's that's where the disconnect comes in but i digress now i try i try not to talk about um these type of stories because it it's a horrible it's a horrible story to discuss and to talk about and i don't want to fall in line with the left and utilize race as a as a tool to poke and prod the other side but it's something that definitely needs to be discussed because it's not something that's in the media as prevalent as it should be um on tuesday uh a 5 year old canon hennant uh was shot point blank in the head by his neighbor darius sesums while he was riding his bike in his front yard or in his in his driveway in north carolina according to reports hennant's sisters were on the porch watching him when the shooting happened now this isn't in the media almost at all because there were things that were involved that I haven't mentioned that changes the whole story and the whole dynamic for what is and isn't newsworthy, quote unquote. Cannon Hinton was a five year old white child shot point blank in the head by Darius Sessoms, who is a black man. If the races were reversed, this would be touted as a racist Nazi Trump supporting bigot hunting down a defenseless innocent black child. But because it was a white innocent defenseless child killed by a black man, it's crickets. There's nothing in the mainstream media. It I I can challenge you to do a search and I guarantee you there's nowhere near the amount of coverage on this story as there was on the the shooting of Rayshard Brooks, George Floyd, uh, or or any black person killed by a white person. But because almost anything is public records, I did a quick search on Darius Sessoms, and as of 2014. Ironically, he has been a registered Democrat. Even more ironically, Austin Hennett is listed as his neighbor, who I can only assume is the father to the boy, Cannon, who was shot by Darius, is a registered Republican. Now, Sources say that Darius was a neighbor and he was pretty friendly with the Hennets. He even, uh, according to family members, even visited and ate dinners with them. So I'm not saying the murder was politically motivated. But it is ironic 
that a Democrat murders the child of a Republican and it gets next to zero mainstream news coverage. Given the races involved, though, it does tend to follow the political bias of the mainstream media, and that is the bigger story. I'm not using skin color or race as a, as a tool. I'm using it to prove a point that the mainstream media and the news outlets tend to follow a certain set of codes for what they report. And that's not what news should be. And it's not just on the left. The right does it too. But the left is far more predominant for it. And that's where, that's where the problem lies. Is had the roles been reversed, had it been a, a black five-year-old child riding his bike, not bothering anybody, and a white man walked into his yard, shot him in the head, it would have been a, a public lynching of that white man. Now, I'm not saying that a, a, a white man should, should not be treated as a murderer for point-blank killing a black child, and I'm not saying that a black man should be treated any differently than what is judicially necessary, but I am saying that you can't sit and say that if this was a white person that he should be publicly lynched, but when it's a black person you speak nothing of it, simply because it goes against your narrative of black people are hunted down and killed by white people because white people are racist, bigoted pieces of, of garbage that that go out every day. They wake up and they think, how can I kill a black person today? Or how can I harm a black person today? That narrative is very flawed and it's it's ridiculously uneducated and and stupid just breaking it down to general layman's terms stupid because if that were the case there were there would be no black people at all if every white person woke up and thought how can i kill me a black person today there would be no black people because as i've stated a hundred times here on Facebook, on Twitter, and everywhere else that I am, white people outnumber black people population-wise by, by many, many percentile. That narrative is obviously very, very flawed. So, for, for any news to not cover this, I mean, if you Google search... Cannon Hinton or Darius Sessoms, you come up with local newspaper and local news channels. You don't come up with, with Fox News. You don't come up with CNN. You don't come up with MSNBC. You don't come up with any of the major news networks because nobody is covering it. I think there's a, a, a one three or four minute clip on Fox News and one 30 second or so clip that MSNBC ran showing not anything about the story, just simply showing the police investigating the area of the shooting with, with a, a caption that states five-year-old child shot in front yard in North Carolina. That's it. They didn't they didn't mention any race. They didn't mention the, the suspect's name, the person who did its name. They didn't mention the kid's name. They didn't mention any specific details. But yet if you search back five minutes ago to some to to a, a black person who was killed by a, a, a white cop and it's it's a 15 minute segment at least minimum where they discuss everything that happened they discuss how horrible the white person was that killed the black person 
They talk to the family of the black person. They talk to the neighbors of the black person. They talk to the to the pastor who who preached at the church down the street that the black person might have not have never even been to. They go out of their way to make that news, but they won't do it for a five year old white child who was who was innocent, sit riding his bike in 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 his front yard on his driveway it it's it's ridiculous at how politically biased the media has become and and people are complacent with it on both sides left and right complacent with it and that is the sad truth of America in 2020 <clears throat> and finally the best story. I've saved the best story for last. Joe Biden finally selected former state attorney Kamala Harris, Kamala, Kamala, I don't know, Kamala, as his vice presidential running mate. And my only question for the listeners is this. Were you as shocked at the announcement as Joe Biden was? CNN jumped all over the story, citing Harris as the first black and South Asian vice presidential candidate. I mean, come on. I mean, that's like saying Abe Lincoln was the first president to be tall and have a beard. Harris and Biden held an announcement. Held... Held held a, a press conference, uh, a, an event, if you will. Take a listen to this. My fellow Americans, now let me introduce to you, for the first time, your next vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris. Kamala, the floor is yours. What do you want? Here you go. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. As I said, Joe, when you called me, I am incredibly honored by this responsibility, and I'm ready to get to work. I am ready to get to work. After the most competitive primary in history, the country received a resounding message that Joe was the person to lead us forward. First of all, Ms. Harris, resounding? No, 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 no. He was all that was left. I mean, come on. Everyone dropped out. How was it? How was it competitive? I, I mean, seriously, these two together are are nuts. They're nuts. Yet we have a president who cares more about himself than the people who elected him. A president who is making every challenge we face even more difficult to solve. But here's the good news. We don't have to accept the failed government of Donald Trump and Mike Pence. In just 83 days, we have a chance to choose a better future for our country. So, Joe, Dr. Biden, thank you for the trust you've placed in me. Does anyone remember when, like, Five minutes ago, Kamala Harris called Joe Biden a liar and a sexual predator and ripped him over how racist it was to that he opposed busing. Anyone? No one. Nobody, nobody remembers that. Luckily, the Internet is forever. Here's the clip. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. Look, 
Everything I have done in my career, I ran because of civil rights. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African Americans, but the LGBT community. But they, Vice President Biden, do you agree today, do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. Well, I there did was not a oppose. failure of, of states to, to integrate no, public schools in America. I was part of the second the, class to integrate Berkeley, the, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, in. The that's why we have the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. That's why we need to pass the equality. She also, like five minutes ago, when she believed Tara Reid, the other woman who accused Biden of sexual assault. I mean, does nobody else see the stupidity here? Is it just me? Or is this a case of Joe Biden is a racist, lying, sexual predator until he offers me a huge position of power? Then it's, he's a great president. He's going to be a great president. He's the best candidate. He's going to win the election in a landslide. Also, which privilege should we attribute to Harris being chosen as the VP pick? Is it her woman privilege? Her black privilege? Her Native American Indian privilege? Does nobody else see the radical, sexist, racist lunacy in choosing a VP pick based solely on a person's skin color and gender? What if Trump had publicly announced he was picking his vice president candidate based on the fact that it was a cis white male. Holy crap. The world would explode. Frankly, frankly, it would explode. I mean, two things about Harris being Biden's vice president pick. One, how will the radical left of Harris mesh with the semi-moderate radical left of Joe Biden? And will this help or hurt Biden in the election with his already dwindling black voters? BBC did an article speaking to three young black voters in which one out of the three was not happy with the pig. She said she thought Harris wasn't progressive enough. The other two were happy simply because Harris is black. The unhappy one seemed to me to have the best comment of the whole take though. She said... As black people, we tend to get too caught up on firsts, and I couldn't agree more. I've been saying it for years. Barack Obama won the first term of his election, the first term, maybe not the second term, but the first term of his election because he was black, period. It was appealing to Americans on a grand scale. It was progressive, and everyone, well, the majority of everyone wanted to be a part of the first black president. He wasn't even the first black president at all. John Hansen, who was the president of the United States in Congress assembled, which basically was the president of the United States before the term president was coined. He was actually the first black president. But the left can't have the great and powerful Barack Hussein Obama dethroned by facts. No, 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 no. I can only imagine how this election will play out as Trump issued a new ad campaign aimed at phony, quote-unquote, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden moments after Biden announced that Harris was his pick. Here, take a listen to this. Kamala Harris ran for president by rushing to the radical left, embracing Bernie's plan for socialized medicine, calling for trillions in new taxes, attacking Joe Biden for racist policies. Voters rejected Harris. They smartly spotted a phony, but not Joe Biden. He's not that smart. Biden calls himself a transition candidate. He is handing over the reins to Kamala while they jointly embrace the radical left. Slow Joe and phony Kamala, perfect together, wrong for America. Only the next 80 days will tell how this plays out. I'm, I'm anxious to see it. I, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little anxious. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a little bit of both right now. 
But that's all the time that we have for this episode of the Johnny Ray Show. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, Also, check us out on the YouTube, on Spotify. I also have it on iTunes now. So make sure and like, share, comment, and subscribe on all the platforms that you possibly can. Help us grow, uh, spread the word. Also, don't miss... This week's episode of the Johnny Ray Debate Show, which will air on Monday due to my daughter's birthday being this weekend. Then I'll be back next Wednesday with the all-new episode of the Johnny Ray Show. Until then, take care. God bless. See, I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself in the the manner in which I talk about it. And so the younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. (laughs) No, no. I have no empathy for it. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. So for, I'm not joking. This is near the end of the Biden for president campaign when reporters were starting to uncover, you know, accusations of plagiarism both in his campaign speeches and in his coursework in law school, uh, misrepresentations about his grades, etc. And there you see Biden, you know, full of bluster when one person in in the kitchen or wherever in New Hampshire said, you know, didn't you inflate your grades? Biden lost it and started uh, berating the man in a way that could only make him look uh, like a bully and like a blowhard. And the other question oh, is, man. could you quickly, I, I think we I, I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. Yeah. And I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. The Me Too movement has forced a cultural reckoning around the issue of sexual violence and harassment against women in America. No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman in anger. And so we have to just change the culture, period, and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching. And why should the voters believe that you can win the national election? I was a Democratic caucus. You ever been to a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lion dog faced pony soldier. <laughs> I got your work straight, Jack. Look, uh, look, uh, look, here's the deal. I'm not voting for you. Well, I knew you weren't, man. You think I thought you'd stand up and vote for you? You're too old to vote for you. We've acted together. We have never, never, never been unable to overcome whatever the problem was. If you agree with me, go to Joe 30330 and help me in this fight. Thank you very much. I'm beginning to see why your wife left you. The president has a big stick. Oh, no, I, I'm not going to be a mule. I, I, I'm, I, I, I got something to do. I got to go do boom, boom, boom. That saves billions of gallons of gasoline. I mean, bi- billions of uh, two point, I think it's $2.3 billion worth of, excuse me, $500 billion in savings and two point something billion metric tons of CO2 going in the air. I promise you. The president has a big stick. I promise you. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the, go, you know the, you know the thing.